I'm Tom Donald from the London Mayfair School of Piano. Well, welcome to your first Harmony Method video. And today you're going to learn so many great things that will really make you think about music fundamentally differently. So this video is applicable to people of all levels, from beginner through to intermediate and even advanced musicians who haven't really thought about how chords work in their music. So let's get started with some real basics here. I'm going to show you a C major scale because this is the first starting point. So this is middle C. So why do we play scales? Why do we practice scales? You know, some people play scales their whole life and they don't even know why they're playing them. Well today I'm going to tell you about a magical number in Western music and in piano music and that's the number seven. That's right, seven. There are seven chords in Western music. Not big chord glossaries and books that are this thick, just seven. I could basically listen to any song, any piece of music and figure it out by ear using numbers between one and seven because there are seven chords that the scale produces. So let's have a look at what these seven chords are. So we're going to start with chord one, which is a C major chord in this case. So let's have a look at this chord here. Now you'll notice that I'm missing the notes in between in this chord triad. I'm missing that note and that note, and that creates a nice, comfortable harmonic sound, which we're so accustomed to hearing in music. You can hear that that sounds very familiar. So let's now play the seven chords. Chord one. Chord two. You notice I'm just replicating the pattern Turn to chord one again because we're on another C. C can be found, by the way, below the two black keys. They're all Cs. And the distance between one C to the next C is an octave. That's something out there for the beginners to know. So they're the seven chords of the C major scale. And they form all the music that we know. Sure, lots of other songs are in other keys and scales, but the great thing about the piano tuning system is that you can replicate that in all of the other scales and produce the same result, meaning you can play the same song in different keys, which basically means there are just seven chords in the music. I know that might sound a bit complicated to start with, but that's really the principle that you really need to think about. There are seven chords in music. And all you have to do as a listener and as someone who loves to listen to music is think, well, what chords out of those seven chords are taking place in the songs that I like to listen to? So let's try and decode that and figure out how this works then. So I'm going to talk about three very significant chords out of the seven chords. I'm going to talk about chord one, and then I'm going to talk about chord four and chord five. Chords one, four, and five. Out of the seven chords, they're probably the most important. And when I say important, I mean that they are the most pivotal chords that are holding the musical structure together. And by the way, this applies to all genres. This could be classical music, this could be jazz and blues, this could be rock or pop or anything contemporary, soundtrack. Whatever style of music you're into, these are sort of like the universal laws of Western harmony. And they're sort of inescapable. So out of the seven chords, these three chords, you can hear them. They sound very familiar, very pivotal, and very happy and bright. They're what we call major chords. Chord one, four, and five. Let me give you an example. Mozart, chord one, chord five, chord one, chord five, chord one, chord five, one five, one five, one five, one. I think we figured out Mozart's secret there. So there are other examples in other genres too, like a 12 bar blues, chord one. And there are 
are thousands and thousands of songs that do that. So let's just talk a little bit about technique before we go into more details about the chords. Now for the beginners out there, you're going to struggle to play three notes at the same time straight away, potentially. And if you have that problem, just use your first three fingers to play the chord. That's fingers one, we call the thumb one, one, two, and three. But the important thing you have to remember, if you do use your first three fingers, make sure your wrist is relaxed. It is so important when you play the piano that your wrist is relaxed. It's the most important thing. So you need to have your wrist relaxed and your first three fingers on the notes, in this case C, E, G, with a relaxed wrist. And the rest of your fingers actually sitting on the piano. Don't take them off the piano. That's very, very bad technique. Um, if you have played piano for longer and you have more flexible fingers, it is better for you to use fingers 1, 3 and 5. Those of you who can't use fingers 1, 3 and 5 yet, because it's a bit more symmetrical and you, your fingers uh, might not be strong enough, particularly these two weak fingers, to be spreading across the chord, you can start with 1, 2 and 3 fingers because that will just give you a context to start with and as your fingers get stronger, you can then move to this more sophisticated fingering. So it's like that. So back to our chords one, four, and five, which in this case is C major, F major, and G major. What about the other chords then? So chords two, three, and six sound fundamentally different to chords one, four, and five. You can hear that. That's because they are minor chords. And minor chords sound sort of sadder. They sound more nostalgic. And the role they have in the music is they sound more expansive. They expand on those happy major chords. And the magic of music really is the combination of major and minor chords. Major, chord one. Minor, chord three. Minor, chord six. Major, chord four. I mean, how many songs do that? Tons of songs do that. So many. Because it sounds great, doesn't it? Major, minor, minor, major. The mixture of both. So, all of a sudden, you now have the knowledge to compose your own music. Just use numbers between one and six and mix them around and see what happens. Get a notepad out. Get to your piano or keyboard and start trying it now. You'll be amazed at how good you sound straight away. Never mind playing Mary Had a Little Lamb in your first piano lesson. That's just plain boring when you can all of a sudden compose your own music. But just one thing that you need to know about, and that's the funny chord, the wild card of the scale, chord seven. Sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? It's what we call a diminished chord. And diminished chords, well actually, back in the olden days, they used to call it the devil's chord. You hear this chord sometimes in film music, you hear it quite a lot in jazz and classical music when there's something dramatic or chaotic happening. You hear it in Italian opera when someone's about to die. Um, you hear it in those old Charlie Chaplin films. But they really make life a bit complicated when we're starting to compose our own music. So you can probably keep away from the chord seven for the time being and compose some lovely examples just using chords one to six. So let me randomly put some chords together. And you can be completely random because the tuning system on the piano is doing the work for us. We can, using what we understand about the scale, create our own music very effectively. So I'm going to randomly, without any strategy, just come up with my own chords. I'm going to start on chord one. Chord four. I might go to chord two. Then to chord five. And just do it in groups of four and loop it around. Um, it's also very good to play the chord four times because it gives the music a rhythmical sound, a melodic sound, a sound of music, not just, just jump in straight to the next chord. It gives the music a sense of time and rhythm. So let's think of another example then. Why don't I start on chord six? Because that's a nice sad minor chord. Remember, one, four, five, major, two, three, six, minor. So what about chord six? Chord three. We're all
all of a sudden out of time. So I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial and we will expand on these concepts. But in the meantime, have fun. Thank you.